Bob Dylan biographer Robert Shelton, often called the man who discovered Bob Dylan as he published the first uh, major review of Dylan in the New York Times in September of 1961. 25 years later, almost to the date of that review, September 25th, 1986, Shelton appeared on the Cleveland morning talk show called The Morning Exchange and was interviewed by music-loving host Fred Griffith. Shelton recounts why Dylan's significant in the evolution of, of Dylan, and, and not only Dylan, but music, you know, rock and roll, from initially being a teen genre to evolving with its audience as the initial ones grew to adulthood and and it became a much more complex, artistic, dense, textured genre. And Dylan is one of the huge impactful figures in that transformation. His lyrics alone and the impact on other writers, the challenges. John Lennon used to talk about how no one challenged him more than Dylan. They had to compete with someone that could write words with such imagery and ob obscure, oblique, relevant meaning. You, everyone got to decide what the songs were about and many of them are, are never ever ever explained or, or understood but you, you hear couplets that just blow your mind. So here Shelton's on his book tour for his then current biography, No Direction Home. Tons of Dylan books up there. I <laughs> couldn't find that one. I've got about 70 others on the shelves, but a neat interview with, with the man that discovered Bob Dylan. About 1965, uh, he had hit the music scene uh, running in 1961, and it was a review in the New York Times by Robert Shelton, that said a bright new face and folk music is appearing at Folk City. Although only 20 years old, Bob Dylan is one of the most distinctive stylists to play in a Manhattan cabaret in months. That was in September of 1961, and uh, it was prophetic. He went on to be one of the monsters of the music industry. And Robert Shelton is with us today. He has been one of the most influential writers on the popular culture and rock and roll. How odd that... Uh, Two uh, middle-aged guys are sitting here talking about rock and roll music this morning. We have silver at our temples. All right. Well, uh, it seems odd, but not really. Uh, rock and roll has got a history now. It's been around for 30 to 35 years, and uh, it encompasses several generations now. It used to be regarded as uh, teenage music, used to be adolescent youth culture. Uh, now, increasingly, uh, the audience uh, includes a, a few wrinklies, older people. Uh, your, uh, your writing about Dylan drew a lot of attention to him, and I remember going out and buying uh, perhaps the first album he ever made. I recall that there was a, a song that had folk roots that he sang about Remember Me, Remember Me, let's see, how did that go? Remember me to... Uh, to one who was there. She was once a true love of mine. Remember yes, that song? Oh, yes. And yes, I remember, yes. uh, I read that, I said, what, what is this Dylan thing? So I got the record, put it on my machine and played that, and it just made the hair stand up on my arms. It mm -hmm. was so, so good. And I couldn't mm -hmm. believe that this is a 20-year-old kid who had this ability to elicit this kind of feeling. What was it about him in those days when he was just a young kid out of Hibbing, Minnesota, that enabled him to catch the attention of a sophisticated critic and cause you to write about him as you did? Uh, there was an enormous amount of intensity about him. Uh, he had charisma. When he was performing on stage, you couldn't take your eyes off him. And the actual content, his songs uh, had a power, uh, observation, acuteness, and were very appealing. Plus the poetry as well. He has a, a, a poetic gift and uh, raised the level of the lyric in the popular song enormously. His influence has been very wide. Uh, those earlier songs, at least on the first two albums, were very derivative, weren't they? 
Yes, he studied the masters like a uh, like. A, Woody Guthrie, you're talking right. about the Guthrie. masters. You mean Woody Guthrie yes, and Woody Josh Guthrie. White? That's it, the yeah. old blues man. Yeah. Uh, studied them to learn their style, learn how to interpret them. Afterwards, he formed a style of his own. He formed several styles of his own, and he became the master who the younger musicians were studying. How did the little kid in Hibbing, Minnesota, come across those singers? Mostly through radio, uh, which formed a sort of uh, lifeline at that point. The local radio station, which was uh, in Hibbing, which was run by a cousin of his, was uh, had a middle-of-the-road policy and not very adventuresome. So Dylan would tune in to so 50,000 waters down in the mid-south and the south on a clear, clear channel right up to Minnesota. And he began to form his taste in that way. When did he get his first guitar? Is that recorded? Uh, it's approximately for the uh, age of uh, 14. He tried a variety of other instruments, and they lasted about a day, a trumpet, a saxophone. And by popular request of his neighbors and his parents, he returned them. With a guitar, he was at home. Now, you spoke about his uh, ability to, to uh, provide real insight into what was going on around him, into the culture around him, into uh, what was going on in the broader society, what was going on in the world. Where did that come from? I mean, where did those insights uh, get developed? He really didn't get formally educated. No, he's pretty much a self-taught musician who never learned how to read or write music. It's all done by ear. He is a self-taught uh, poet. He never took any courses in, in this. And he lasted six months at the University of Minnesota. He was a very noisy dropout. Mm -hmm. He really felt more at home outside the classroom than in it. His ears were acute. His, his uh, sense of observation was acute. And although he never made a big fuss about studying the older poets and the older songwriters, he was a student, a Rhodes Scholar, you might say, mm -hmm. but the Rhodes spelled R-O-A-D-S. Was he a genius? Is he a genius? Well, it's a dangerous word, but I think it is uh, applicable. Uh, the the speed with which uh, he could learn uh, the uh, the um, I th I think genius is the right word for him. Uh, he uh, has been inaccessible to the media generally. Uh, how was your uh, contact with him? Your history with him? He Quite owes you a lot, of course. No, he really owes me nothing. Uh, my publisher is making a big thing of, about the fact that I discovered Bob Dylan. He discovered himself. Uh, there's very little that uh, a review can do except call some attention uh, to someone who is worth uh, that attention. I may have saved him a little bit of time. Um, he has been... Uh, he's dueled with the press down the years. If people are sympathetic and seem to understand what he's all about, he has time for them. If they're hostile or asking him questions that are too personal, uh, he, f he duels with them, he fends them off, he uses sarcasm and send up, and he's perfected the form of the anti-interview. In the process of granting an interview, he doesn't answer exactly. anything. That's it. He is the uh, Reggie Jackson of music. Yeah, exactly. He did this in London uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. A hundred uh, British journalists turned out uh, for the launch of a film he's making that he's starring in, and uh, he told them nothing. He was all over the, the British media. Uh, let's talk about the women in his life over the years. Uh, he he uh, has been married how many times? Just one just time, one, but he's but, had a number. Uh, five children. Yeah. For uh, one, four with uh, from that marriage, and one from his uh, ex-wife's former marriage. There have been a lot of women in his life. Uh, he is a romantic, and he's a very passionate, uh, very passionate uh, guy. And he needs a lot of inspiration, and uh, um, and those women give it to him, huh? I presume they do. Now, uh, let's uh, uh, ask just a bit about uh, uh, his. Uh, religious uh, uh, predilections. He has been all over the spectrum, hasn't he? He was born Jewish, and uh, at well, some point in his life he had become a born-again Christian, and then mm -hmm. he embraced Judaism again. Yeah. What is the nature of that religious odyssey, and why has he moved about so? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's sort of a search for uh, spirituality.
spiritualism, for inspiration again, and for identity with a religion. It seems very confusing. I mean, people have been saying Bob Dylan changes religions uh, as often as most of us change our socks. It's quite easy to send it up. Actually, he was not any part of any formal religion up till about 79. He became a born-again Christian for a time. I think what he's doing is walking the hyphen between Judeo-Christian. He's very interested in seeing what one has to offer to the other mm -hmm. and trying to show in a way, a rather confusing way, that he doesn't seem to think that, that there should be a, a separation between the two. Dylan was in Akron not so long ago. He was uh, here with uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Oh, yes. uh, what, what are, uh, in my mind, an odd uh, juxtaposition of talent. What do you make of that most recent tour of his? Well, I was in Europe and unable to hear it, but I've heard a lot of accounts of it and so on. I think that uh, Tom Petty is filling a sort of a gap there that uh, one possibly was uh, originally created by Roger McGuinn of the Birds, or I've heard that comparison. Mm -hmm. Dylan's worked with a variety of groups down the years. Uh, the best, probably best long-term affiliation was with the band yes. and uh, other groups for you didn't think the chemistry worked all that well with the, yeah. you didn't you know well i've heard varying reactions some people like it and uh, several have said they didn't he'll try it for a while and try someone else he's what 46 now he's just he turned 45 in uh, right. in may well where is he heading what will bob dylan be doing and saying and picking and singing uh, say 20 years from now on the eve of retirement <laughs> do you have any idea no, except that uh, I think uh, we were always afraid we were going to lose him. He was one of these doomed poets, uh, poetic types. People from uh, the age of 20 on were always saying he won't be with us very long. I think he's got a lot of staying power, and whatever it is, he'll do it his way. He's a very individualistic, very nonconformist individual. And as to a prediction of what he'll do tomorrow, I won't offer it. <laughs> He'll be doing something. Well, he wrote the anthems of a generation, and this is uh, probably, without a doubt, the most uh, important look at one of the most important men in the popular culture of the past half century. Bob Dylan, No Direction Home, The Life Music of Bob Dylan by Robert Shelton. Thanks a lot. I've enjoyed your work over the years. Thank you Thank very you much. for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. Speaking of music, we will be talking in a moment or two via satellite with Reedy Jackson.